What's happening guys, I'm TechStars. Welcome to Setup Wars episode 195, Budget Edition. A quick reminder that the word budget in this episode means setups that cost less than $2,000 and that does include the cost of the PC. Also, before we begin, I want to announce the winner of the worst setup from episode 190. Drum roll, please. The person with the worst setup goes to Ethan with a whopping 61% of the votes. Talk about a landslide. So congratulations on winning, or I should say losing, the potato edition. If you're watching this video, toss an email to setupwars at gmail.com to claim your $100 cash prize. If you guys want to participate for Setup Wars, as always, watch the video link down below. But with that said, let the Setup Wars begin. Stop paying full price for Windows 10 CD keys, you guys. You can pick one up for only $13 on yourcdkey.com. Just make sure to use my code to get that extra 20% off. Links in the description. Starting off the show, we have Cohen from Washington and his super compact dual monitor setup that he uses for gaming, editing, and animating. He's using a 22-inch Acer as the main display with a 19-inch Dell monitor on the side as a secondary. It's interesting that he decided to keep his PC on the desk instead of using that extra space for the second monitor, especially since the PC doesn't even have a clear side panel. However, from an aesthetic point of view, I think this layout does look much cleaner since the black case ties in well with the rest of the gear. And plus, the other monitor is a completely different size, so it's probably what I would have done as well. For the gear, Cohen is using the Logitech G213 Prodigy keyboard and a wireless mouse from Red Dragon. For audio, he's got a set of speakers, but he does have a headset as well hanging from the side of the desk. Speaking of which, I do think that the wood desk doesn't really go well with the setup. It has this old antique vibe, which is kind of clashing with the color scheme. So if you're planning on upgrading something soon, I would put the desk as priority. Maybe get something bigger to support dual monitors in the future. Now the microphone placement might be a little bit of an issue because it does block off a part of the second display once extended. I would recommend moving that over to the right side instead for better visibility. And finally, the PC power in the setup is a custom built using the Ryzen 3 2200G. Aside from the cable management inside the PC, there is a few other things that's wrong with this system. First off, the RAM sticks are in the wrong slots. You will need to remove the first RAM one slot over to the left to take advantage of dual channel. Also, why did you go with 16 gigs of RAM without a GPU? I would have gone with 8 gigs and saved the money towards a GPU. And then finally, the hard drive is in backwards. Unfortunately, the cables are supposed to face the back, but it's not a big deal anyways considering you can't really see inside your PC. Although I do appreciate the courage of adding a black and red rectangle painting on the wall to add a bit of color, maybe even personality, I just think it's a bit too forced and out of place because it gives off this modern look and it clashes with the aesthetics of the rest of the setup. In fact, I think the poster that's next to your setup will look much better instead of those rectangles. I think Cohen has a very clean and simple budget setup, but it definitely needs some work to spice it up a bit. Thank you for entering. Up next we have Dan from Miami and his interesting setup for gaming and editing. So the main display is a 32 inch TV from Samsung that looks like it's being held up by the desk and he also has a 6th gen iPad that he mounted to the TV and he uses that as a second display to watch videos when using the PC. Speaking of which, you will never guess where he put his PC. I'll give you guys a few seconds to guess. So not only did Dan put his PC inside his closet, but it doesn't even have a case. He mounted the board to a motherboard tray from an old case he had and he liquid cooled his CPU. All right, it is getting too hot in here. Let's get back into the setup. So for peripherals, he's rocking the budget PicTech mouse and the Razer Black Widow X Tournament Edition keyboard, which is probably the most expensive gear in this entire setup. Actually, I stand corrected. The Razer Nari headphones are more expensive than the keyboard. But all in all, the entire setup does cost less than $2,000 still. But that's pretty much all that the setup has to offer. I would say it's a pretty unique makeshift setup with the gear Dan already owned. However, he did a good job keeping it clean and the cables are nice and tidy. It looks like he used a few zip ties and Velcro straps to keep things organized. It definitely feels like Dan put a good effort in building this setup. And I like to think that there is a correlation between having a clean setup and a clean room, which does seem to be true in Dan's case. I also like the tiny console setup he has on the other side of his bed with the wall mounted PS4. But yeah, I mean, overall a very clean and unique budget setup. Thank you, Dan, for sharing this with us. And number three, we have Ivan from Mother Russia and what he likes to call his ultimate budget setup for gaming, photo editing, and content consumption. 
You guys always hear me complain about having such large displays up close and personal. Well, this setup is no exception. I want people to realize that this is not practical, but more importantly, this is really bad for the eyes. It's recommended to stay between 20 to 40 inches from your TV or monitor, and having such a large screen up close can also cause neck strain. I care about your necks, okay? And you know what, I get it. This might be the only display you had lying around because of budget reasons, but it doesn't mean you can't work around it. In this case, I would mount the TV on the wall and pull back your entire setup to give you that extra distance. This will also free up a lot of space on your desk since you won't have a 40 inch TV on it anymore. For peripherals, Ivan is using a bloody keyboard and a basic Canyon wireless mouse with a pair of Savant speakers, which looks like is the only audio source for this setup. And then we have the PC, featuring a Ryzen 5 2600 with the GTX 1660 Super. However, Ivan does have a PS4 Slim as well that he keeps underneath the desk. Speaking of which, if you do end up mounting the TV on the wall, you can even put your PS4 Slim on the desk. In Soviet Russia, cables manage you. Cables I manage pretty good for the most part. I do appreciate you using zip ties to wrap the cables to the legs, but using tape for the earphone cables, uh, it's a bit tacky. I do recommend picking up some cable clips. They cost only $7 and you get a bunch of them that you can use pretty much anywhere. I think you have a good foundation here to work on and improve your setup with some minor tweaks. Thank you Ivan for entering. Okay, the only reason why I put this setup in the budget edition is because I was genuinely impressed by Muhammad's ingenuity. If you look up budget in a dictionary, you will probably see this setup. So this is Muhammad's setup for gaming, programming, and watching movies. The main monitor is a 29 inch ultra wide from LG that's sitting on a custom monitor riser. <laughs> and he used a few product boxes in the back as a riser to hold his laptop. That way he can use it as a second display. <laughs> Very clever. For peripherals, he's using the Imperial Mech keyboard with an Armageddon mouse and it looks like he covered the desk with a black cloth of some sort, that way it stays consistent with the color scheme. I'm actually surprised you didn't go the extra mile and painted those awesome speaker stands in black as well. I think it would have really tied the entire setup together. Other than the speakers, he does have headphones as well which are hanging from the corner of the desk and then we got the subwoofer underneath here sitting on a packaging box. You know, the more I look at these pictures, the more I am impressed. You really took the word budget to a whole new meaning, and I love that it didn't stop you from building your dream setup. Mohamed, congratulations on receiving the 25th seal of approval. I absolutely love the creativity and determination that you put in this setup. If you're watching this video, you got bamboozled. I'm just kidding, I can't give you the seal, but what I can give you is $100 in cash that you can hopefully put towards your setup, simply because I really love the dedication you put in this setup while being on a tight budget. So if you're watching this video, toss an email to setupwars at gmail.com to claim your $100 in cash. Thanks for entering. Wrapping up the episode is Oliver all the way from the UK and his Setup Wars inspired black and red themed hybrid setup. You know, seeing all those black and red acoustic foams brings back old memories. Ah, uh, the good old times. So Oliver is using the IKEA Freddy desk to build this setup which is used for gaming, light streaming, and video editing. One of the things I like about this desk is the amount of utility it offers, from cup holders on the side to a bunch of shelves to store things and even cutouts in the back for cable management. Oliver is rocking a single 24 inch monitor from BenQ and a Drevo Caliber keyboard paired with the Logitech G502 mouse. I gotta give points to Oliver for staying so consistent to the black and red theme, not just through the lighting, but also the gear choices as well. Not only did he skin his Xbox One and D-brand skins, but even his tripod that's holding up his webcam is black and red. And finally for audio, he's got a pair of speakers up top for watching videos, however he mostly uses the Logitech G332 headset for gaming, which definitely needs a hanger. Look, I even found one that's perfect for your setup. The PC power in the setup has an i3 quad-core CPU with the ASUS GTX 1050 Ti. Cables are managed pretty well underneath the desk with no complaints other than the fact that you use tape to hold up the RGB strips. Overall, I think you built a great setup, however I do have a few recommendations. First off, the setup is missing a couple of acoustic panels. I would cut any extra ones you have and cover the empty part of the wall so it doesn't stick out as much. Secondly, I think using a tripod to hold your webcam is a bit unnecessary. They do sell these cheap clamp arms on Amazon that are used for webcams specifically, and you can even clip this on your desk or the top shelf. This will not only clean up your desk, but it will give you infinite adjustability. With these minor tweaks, I'm confident you can definitely improve your setup. Thank you so much, Oliver, for entering. 
And that wraps up this episode of Setup Wars. As always, you guys can vote in the comment section or click on the poll on the top right and cast your vote there. Make sure to backhand the crap out of the like button if you guys enjoyed the show and follow me on my Twitter and Instafail accounts if you want to see sneak peeks and behind the scenes of upcoming projects. I love your beautiful faces and I will see you in the next one.